Now then, today I'm coming to you from the southernmost city in Israel, Elat, because there's a border here to Jordan and today is of course desert day. And to get to the desert, I've got to cross that border. The reason I'm making this video is because there's not much information online that agrees with each other about how to cross this border, if it costs money, if so, how much, how long it takes, and other details and stuff. So hopefully I'm gonna clear up some of that by making this. So far today, which by the way is 30 degrees, so dying, walked two or three miles from the city to here because by the way, there are no buses, at least none that I could find that go from the city of Ilat to the border, which is here somewhere. And then after I get across the border, I've got more of an odyssey to complete because I'll have to get a taxi somewhere for like an hour and then walk like 10 miles or so, I think. But general plan is just to stay in the desert for a few days see what happens there i guess not an awful lot it's a fucking desert in it but i don't know could be interesting but first of all we've got a border to tackle hi apparently i've got to pay some border tax yeah 106 shekels. okay all right yeah so there's apparently a thing called border tax it just cost me 36 dollars i think that's to leave israel like an exit tax thing And then after you pay that, you take your passport to the first woman that I went to at the passport control counter, give her it back, and then, well, that whole thing took about three minutes so far, so simple enough up to now. So yeah, overall, about five or six minutes in total to leave Israel. All you gotta do is pay for the exit tax. And then this bit over here is the, uh, the entering Jordan side. So we're halfway done. So far, easiest thing in the world. No, England, Britain. This way. Okay. Alright, so they were just playing games on their phone anyway. So yeah. Hey, just one visa, please. Thank you. Thank you. Do you stamp the passport, or can you, or can you stamp paper? This. Okay. Stamp the... Alright, so I asked my guy to not stamp the passport. I'll explain why soon. I've been given this thing to fill out. I think he's gonna stamp that. How do you I'm from the UK. What? England, Britain. Okay. Take it in taxi. Thank you. Okay. And um, yeah, that's about that, I'm done. Um, this thing that he asked me to fill out, he kind of stops me halfway down, I think. I think literally they wanted to go for dinner instead. So I only filled half this out and then stamped the back of it. That literally took from Israel to here, getting everything done uh, about half an hour maximum. Like, yeah, there was no one there. It was super simple, they didn't ask any questions. They didn't have to pay anything to enter Jordan. So when you see that there's like a, an entry fee for Jordan, like $40, I think people say it's whatever. It's not true, there isn't one. Dead easy. Anyway, the reason I asked them to not stamp my passport is because, as we know, if you've been to Israel and it's stamped uh, by Israel, then you can't go to a lot of countries in the future, like a lot of Arab countries that I plan to go to at some point. So, an entry stamp to Jordan here would also give away the fact that you've been to Israel because this is a land border crossing. It's not an airport, so there's only one place you could have possibly crossed from to be it entering Jordan at this point, and that is from Israel. So even an entry stamp to Jordan at a land crossing from Israel is a giveaway you've been to Israel. It's just as harmful as having a direct Israel stamp. So um, just ask them not to stamp it if you want to go to an Arab country or a country that opposes Israel. Um, and also it's worth mentioning they don't really care about not stamping it. They're not offended by it. They understand it, I guess. It must happen quite a lot. So if you want to go to one of those countries, ask them to stamp some paper. You'll write a few things on it to prove it's you. They'll stamp the back of it, sorted. 
the important thing is though not to lose that bit of paper because if you lose that on your trip and try and get back they're probably going to think you're an illegal immigrant so best to keep hold of that or loads of shit's going to kick off anyway yeah i'm in and now i've got to try and make my way to the deserty place so time to argue with some arab taxi drivers <laughs> This is fucking remarkable. I'm in a bastard desert. So firstly, to back up on the whole storyline situation, well, I got a taxi from the border to a place called Wadi Rum Visitor Center, which is kind of like an entrance to the desert. So if you want to come for a few hours, you can just see a bit of it. And for your information, that's going to cost you about 30 Jordanian dollars and take about an hour. From that point, it's about a five or six mile hike to Wadi Rum Village, which is where a lot of the camps are. But the one I'm staying in is another five or six miles after that into the actual desert. Um, so I was preparing myself for a, quite a few hour hike through some sand. But literally straight away, I was picked up by some guy who took me straight to the village and saved me that first six miles. He took me to the guy's house whose camp I'll be staying in and they made tea and it was these. Oh my fucking god, that's the grossest thing I've ever seen. Look at this contraption. They're about to be sick. Literally, I'm about to fucking vomit. That was minging. If another one of them comes in a fucking mile of me, I'm off. Fuck the desert. Weird crab looking fucking beetle thing. Anyway, where was I? Um, yeah, so we had tea and I was about to embark on the six mile hike to the camp but then my man's nephew drove me halfway so I've actually saved like eight miles hiking altogether I've only got a few to go. Slight problem though, I was told when you see the mountain turn left, well I think you can see my predicament here, it's fucking full of them innit? How many left do you want me to take? Shoulders starting to ache quite a bit, bag weighs a fucking ton but uh I don't really dare sit down to rest in case the king of the scarab is coming back to get me. Fucking gross little div. Anyway, let's put all that aside. I'm in a desert and I'm buzzing about it. See, my man's got camels. Look at him. By the way, um, if this gets a bit windy, I'm soz. There's not much I can do about it, but soz. Sit rep. Uh, there's one camp really far straight ahead of me. There's also one to my side, but that's a bit closer. It's probably like, well, less. Um, I was going to pretend I could tell how far away things are then, but I've got no bastard idea either. It could be 10 minutes, it could be three miles. And actually, I don't, I don't reckon I'm going to walk along to cover four miles, so it must be that one. Whatever. What does it matter? At least if I die here. Yeah? I'll be discovered with a Dees tan. Got that going for me. Actually, no, you know what? Looking at that, I reckon the sun's gonna set soon, so I'm gonna head over the opposite direction and find a spot on a little cliff to have a gaze at it. I'll tell you what, shit is a lot further away than it looks in the desert. I'm almost there. This is astonishing. I know my camera's not doing very well at picking this up, but... But yeah, I know this video... Video 
has gone wildly off track, but uh, welcome to Jordan. These next few days are gonna be mint, so 